What is art? By Piro. Well, this question raises many issues that have been discussed recently and throughout the history of mankind. Such as, is a certain type of skill required to be an artist and is a certain level of skill required? Uh, is there a certain level or type of quality that is required? And these are two different questions, right? Somebody with a lot of skill has the ability to make quality uh, by definition, but it doesn't mean they do every single time. So if a skilled, someone skilled enough to be considered an artist, if that is a criteria, were to make something of a low quality, is that art? And of course, then the vice versa. If somebody of a low skill makes a high quality thing, is that art? In which case, no, a certain level of skill is required. Does art have to be for an audience? Is it a kind of entertainment? Primarily, is it a classification of of uh, <laughs> of showing off? Is there some group that can decide what's art or not with more authority than some other group? Is it possible to have an authority about what is art? And and then just the, a combinatorial. You know, version of the above, I think. Um, is there a difference between being an artist and merely having created art? All right, art. Art, 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 art. Well, sounds like a thing. It, it's a noun. But in reality, um, I think I won't argue too much that art is a system. Everything's a system. Said it before. But art, the way I'm talking about it, is a system. I'm just going to tell you how I think of art. This isn't an argument that everybody should think of art this way. But if you don't have a better way to think about it, then maybe you should. This is what I think. Now, art is a system as I'm talking about it. Okay? Uh, there are things we call works of art in this system, there are people we call artists in this system, there are processes we call artistic in this system. That's a good spectrum that covers the grammar of art, but there's thousands of terms related, no doubt. Yes? With me so far? Alright. I'm gonna characterize the system for you. I think I know what the system is about. What the class of category is and it's things involving something mental becoming something material okay. that's this is what I think that art has to do with things that are mental becoming material that's what's lovely about art now it's interesting to me personally that experience is sort of a, a complement to art because it's where things that are material in some sense become things that are mental in some sense and you can see that that creates a cycle and this is a diagram of how Piro sees life right on the doing side it's all art there are other ways of framing doing besides art I could put engineering there as well why? Because I think engineering is a kind of art, if done correctly. And if you don't do your engineering as an art, I don't even consider you an engineer. You're just some sort of a dangerous hack that makes things that are probably going to fall down or at the very least be so hideous that they drive people insane to interact with. Okay. But you could frame it other way. You could say that on the art side, it's slavery or drudgery or work. Now, I, I, I think it all falls under art. And this is the sense in which I say you can live your life as art. Because there's a lot of kinds of art. Architecture is an art that is an engineering as well. Okay. So how does this affect uh, 
the questions that I brought up earlier. Okay, well, uh, well, obviously I have to answer this as no, because, you know, things that are mental become material. There becomes a, uh, uh, an argument that this is a trivial categorization. Oh, everything's art, but, uh, not all things are equal. Everything might fall in the category. You see, when you don't think that there are things, then, then you know you can never say what something is, because is is a term that applies to things. Uh, but it's a very useful thing, this concept is, to be categorization sets. It's very useful. What you need is a criteria that lends itself to gradation. Right, and so we'll get to that. Um, again, obviously, in the way I just described it, if it's art or not, is not based on the quality. These things are going to become criteria that we use to create a gradation in what we appreciate, what artistic things we appreciate, and how we rank and rate and measure things artistically, personally. Again, clearly in my system, the audience really has nothing to do with it. Of course, you do have things like, um, you know, s shared subjective reason and all kinds of results of conversation where some group might have a lot of intelligent things to say on uh, whether someone's mental idea seems to have been expressed well. You know, in materialism, there's never going to be a perfect transmission. And besides, mental stuff, the medium, is different than outside the brain. So therefore, it's going to change. It's going to be something different. So getting something mental into something uh, material uh, is, is an individual thing. And whether it worked, only the individual could really know, right? Because they're the only one that has access to that mental part. But a group could be smart enough and see behavior and get inferences. And in the sense that they can't be the final authority on what is official, they could still inform that person and that person could say, oh yeah, you're right, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking that way when I made that part of the art and learn something from it. So it's not that the group couldn't know better or inform the artist. You can see from that cycle how it's fundamentally a subjective thing to tell if something is art you need to know, or, or a gradated sense of art, like good art versus bad, you're going to have to know how good or bad that transformation was from the mental to the material. And we're going to get into intentionality. Was it intentional? If I draw a really good face just by scribbling and it ends up looking like a face, sort of by, you know, luck or unconscious even, that's different than intending to make something that looked a particular way. The artist, the person, the individual could only decide what really is art. Everybody can decide what they think is art, and that includes the individual. Again, even the individual might, can't really officially, nobody can officially say, well, did this mental thing turn into something material? Because it always turns into something material. And the criteria to, to decide whether that transformation was true or not is something that's going to have to come down primarily to the individual, though. The closest thing to an official judge is the individual. They look at that piece of art and say, does that feel like something out of my mind? Does it seem like the thing I was trying to get into the material world? These are questions, obviously, only a person with access to that mental realm, which is that same individual, can decide. Seems easy enough to me. So I think I've described the differences, um, and I believe in a thing called unintentional art, and that the gradation and ranking of art is, comes down to the more intentional, uh, the materialization, uh, the more artistic the skill in that transformation. Uh, but of course some people master unintentional or improvisational styles uh, and and so uh, the intentionality is still present there it's the intentionality to create a methodology which creates a result but it is a little less direct 
So the elements of art belong to categories that show uh, prototype characteristics. And I, I say that they are idealized around optimally intentional. So, you know, for example, somebody's painting a picture and they paint it a certain way, better than normal. But it turns out just because it was a cold day in their studio and their hand was numb and, and so it came out better, right? That does not fit the idealized thing of it being an artistic skill, that better painting. The quality is not attributed to an artistic skill, but just to the environment. On the other hand, if, a, if an artist keeps their studio cold on purpose because they know about this effect, then it would be an artistic skill. So what we use to measure good art from bad art is whether something was more intentional versus less intentional. Right? And, and the question of do you like it is different. The question of is something good art is different from I like it, it gave me feelings that I liked having. Two separate questions. Now, with this view, more or less, for decades, I have found that I get ver valuable feelings from anything that I find artistic. But I don't necessarily actually enjoy them. Like, it could be heart-wrenching, or in, in, a, in a negative sense. It could be like a bad experience, and I don't really enjoy that art. But I do appreciate it. It really leads to new questions. Those are massive questions that are confused by objective epistemology. Um, the real questions are, are how do you measure quality of art? You know, everything could be art, could be seen, can be framed as art, and you have to ask a, a question of how you're going to rank them. Right? You want to buy a piece of art. You're going you're gonna to buy the stuff you rank highly. You know, just to be pedestrian about my examples and mundane. Okay, and so you, you have questions of quality, questions of fidelity, uh, this issue of intentionality is how you measure those. Um, and you have personal taste. The, ultimately, it's personal taste. You might prefer unintentional art. However, to me, this does not mean that you can call entertainment art. You can't call stuff made for an audience automatically art. You could just say you like it. So to me, the first thing is, it, it, is it art has to do with sort of the intentionality or the, the full way it was created and the, what it makes of material from the artist's mind. And when I see that process going, I, I, I like that process. I like saying, okay, let's look at the results of that. Because the results of, of things people make for other people to me, that's less interesting. It might taste better with better salt and sugar flavors in some sense, but I like this, this other method of people taking their ideas and feelings, their mental world and making the material. Taking just that subset of people, what's your personal taste? That's gonna be the, the final ranking factor. Doesn't mean we can't share a sense of art that has to do with uh, the fidelity of the work to the idea that behind it, uh, the quality, you know, re related and judged in terms of that, and intentionality, and then, given all of the things that fit that, we have an understanding of these things are artistic, and then the interesting conversation is actually, yeah, that was artistic, but I didn't like it because it made this statement. Yeah, that was artistic, but I didn't like it because I don't like noir feel. I understand it was intentional. I understand that the message that went through it, I saw the message, even though I didn't like some of the elements, weren't my personal taste. And so you could discuss things in a more sophisticated manner with this view than we often get. Ugh. Personal taste is not meaningless. In fact, it's where all meaning comes from. Okay. Only through a person is there such a thing as meaning, okay? And I would include the possibility of non-human persons. I like the word person to be related to personality, and I think other creatures have personalities. But only through a person does meaning arise. 
Hello. The sum total of all meaning iterating over all individuals is not nil, then the element sum cannot all be nil, right? So if a group of people could tell you what is art, then that means some individual is able to tell you what art is. It could only have a sum total if there's a, something to sum up. So in reality, a group is less likely than an individual, not just because of the way I've defined art, but because if a group of people has an idea of art that's accurate, it means some subset has that, which means that that individual has a better idea of what art is than the sum total or average of what the group thinks. Shared rational opinions are this kind of a sum, so any idea of, of art that a group has is just an alternate opinion with some noise in it, you know, distorting whatever uh, the subset has the most apt view of art, if you can follow that, which I think you should be able to. I mean, I know people like to blame me for not being able to follow an idea like that, but maybe just, I don't know, I rewind. That's how I get things. <laughs>